Rising family, welcome to another edition of the reading of the Vodou Gnostic Universe. I am your reader, Pharaoh Brown, and in this edition of Dr. Reginald Crosley's book, we will be examining the body double and the concept of the body double as it relates to astral projection and those things of that nature. As we delve into the section of the book, Dr. Crosley will give a further scientific explanation for all of the spiritual phenomenon that exists within the Vodou cosmology. And we shall immediately begin. The body double has the ability to do whatever the visible, visible body can do without having the molecular structure of the flesh and thus the decaying or decomposition of the corpse. Therefore, the molecules that store memory have to transform the information into electron, photon, and other particle and wave functions in order to present them in a screen field of consciousness. That shadow matter field is essentially wave function, energy, or quantum that can transmute into ordinary atoms in proper conditions. Our visible matter transmit information at the electronic or wave function level, and the invisible matter is closer in essence to the wave function or wave photon reality. At death, when all functions cease in the visible body, there is separation between the latter and its double. The double leads an independent existence. It does not go far away immediately. Just after death, it is still in the surrounding area and witnesses everything that takes place in the house. Its existence is that of a spectator, something like a person watching a movie. That spectator is following the actions very closely, but he cannot interfere with the acts of the protagonists. The soul is interacting very weakly with the visible matter, that is, wife, children, relatives, and surroundings. At that stage, it is called a yi, shadow or ghost, by the Dehomian. It is not free to live a fully Kiffian existence, that is, in quantum dimension, with all the known paradoxes and principles. For example, it is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. It can communicate through the panpsychic field with another living person that has a psychic predisposition. A mother, for example, can suddenly feel that something is happening to a dead son or a daughter far away. During the wake, Haitians, like Africans, have that the Yi is still there in the surroundings, and that they must show their affection and appreciation of him by wailing and weeping, saying good things about him, and entertaining him with songs and drums. But the most important thing after the wake is to send him away to the grave or in the abode of the dead, because he is dangerous at that time. We would like to wake, we would like to take with him the loved ones so that the surrounding spouse, children, and relatives close to him dress in black because black is the property of keeping shadow entities at a distance. They use other artifacts, talisman, or in Kesi, to keep away the ghosts or ye, such as the tracing of an indigo cross on the forehead or carrying a clove of garlic. Eventually, the shadow clone may dissipate into oblivion totally by the process of degradation of energy if it does not receive boosts from the visible world, or from another dimension such as the eternal dimension. The family rituals and the postmodern homage, the veneration by friends, peers, societies, or country constitute boosts for the soul. The family rituals or those of Odu society are very important for the existence of the Semedo. Without proper rituals, the soul may be transformed into a malvolent ghost or baka, or may fade away into oblivion. The existence and power of Odun's are lower depend on the living people, as far as the visible world is concerned. Without the ritual boosts, the shadow double is a victim of the law of entropy and degrades into a very elemental form of force or energy, rejoining the universal pool of gravity inherent in the 86% of dark matter of the cosmos. The near-death experience is reported floridly in the 20th century by people of different walks of life illustrate the interactions between the physical body and its shadow counterpart. 
The out-of-body experience recalled by patients who sustain cardiac arrest while they are being revived by CPR techniques is probably related to a quasi-separation between dark matter and visible matter. The soul, like a standby companion, is observing everything in its surroundings and elsewhere to some extent due to the principle of ubiquity. It is observing the resuscitation team in their effort to bring the corpse cadaver back to life. Paradoxically, the soul is in and out of the body at the same time, enjoying its wave function reality to the utmost, but it is more out than in. However, if the CPR is successful, it is pushed back forcefully into the visible, visible physical body. The medical establishment considers the near-death experience and its out-of-body phenomenon as a form of hallucination or dream in which the quantum reality of the human being may play a part. But with the concept of the tomato, we might be one step closer to, ho to a holistic reality. We have seen in the phantom limb syndrome some aspects of the hologrammatic nature of the tomato. The amputation of the visible limb does not cut its clone so that the information network is still active in the parallel limb. In the case of organ transplant, we may have another illustration of the fractal nature of the body double. It has been reported that a patient after receiving a kidney transplant from a donor who has an, who has an alcoholic, who, is, who was an alcoholic, began to experience a craving for booze and fast food items. He cannot understand why he was having such a bizarre desire for things he never enjoyed until he learned more about the deceased donor. From the vitalist standpoint, the physical transplant carries with it a fractal portion of the donor's dark matter clone. This fraction brings to the new person a store of information network and enters into transaction with the new body-soul complex. At times, the transplant signal processing network overrides the receiver's own network. This is a minor form of com composite or superposition state compared with a dramatic crisis of possession that we will consider later. What is the destiny of the shadow matter tomato or gross bon orge after the separation at death? In the African Haitian alternate reality, the immediate family and relatives of the deceased or his human force society take step to ensure a smooth passage to the netherworld. At the appointed time, some specific rituals are required, and it is the duty of the family or vodou society to perform them. If the deceased was an initiate or a honsu kanzo, a ritual called desonin is, must, is to be performed. It must be done before or after burial. It consists of the separation of the protectoloa, the maititi, from the body or the devotee. From the initiation rites, a symbiotic relationship has been established between them, and at death this link must be broken asunder. This will allow us to speak of the outer souls of the pluralist human person. Another basic con con consti uh, constituent of the human person is the Siledo in the Homian worldview. It corresponds to the T-Bon Ange of the Haitian culture. It is a psychic parcel coming from Mau, the creator. It is a fractal force that gives awareness of good and evil and is a, potent, a portent of imminent justice. The soul is also called C, according to Mercier and Mapu. It is also seen as a vital force that sustains all other existing forces in space-time. At death, it returns to Mau, who is the Alpha and Omega of all things. It does not go into judgment before the throne like God in Christian eschatology. It does not receive any reward or punishment. It is in itself a network of information to humans and to Mau as far as good and bad deeds are concerned. No cult or rituals are offered to the Se or Salido. What is the nature of the Salido? It is made of invisible matter, like the Semedo. It is a finer form of wave particle. Is it an ent entirely novel variant of the original master force issued by fiat from the eminent god? At any rate, we do know something of its function. It is also a network of information and energy, and as such, it enters into it enters into interactions with the complex physiology of the pluralist human being. From the supersymmetry theory, it could be seen as a boson or pure energetic counterpart of the shadow matter or fermion. In essence, 
there exist three basic constituents of the human being, the corpse cadaver, the visible body, and its two souls, Samito and Salido. They are always present in a normal human society. However, that cannot be said of the Dijoto, the ancestral soul that can be reincarnated only with proper conditions. Otherwise, it can be lost to the family or the clan. The same can be said of another soul called Skepoli or Kapoli in Dahomean culture. This soul is acquired only through Fa initiation. It is reserved only for men as head of family. Women and children cannot have it. However, as a woman becomes the head of the family, she will be considered like a man and will receive this Skepoli. What is the nature of this Skepoli? It is most likely a shadow entity of Odun that enters into composite state with the individual through a Fa initiation. The word Fa stands for Ifa or Ife, which was an important center of black African culture for hundreds of years starting about 1000 AD. It was the cradle of Yoruba civilization in West Africa. The Fa initiation allows the individual to see the future. That initiation does not seem to exist in Haiti. Haitian Vodou use primarily a Bantu or Petro system of divination, such as the Gmedo. However, the process by which the Scapoli is joined to the outer souls of the individual is identical to the crisis of possession by the lower of Odun. It is the interference of the Vodou network of information with that of the individual. Thus, the case of the Dijoto or the Scapoli are facing a symbiotic relationship that can be permanent or temporary during the lifetime of the adept. Where is exactly the abode of the dead? According to the adepts, it is either on earth, inside the earth, or Chthonian realm, in the sea, or in the sky, in quantum parlance, it is an ubiquitous place with some preferred convergence zones, such as the sub-aquatic and subterranean locations. Heavens and other solar systems and other planets of our own solar systems are not the places of predilection. Even the hierarchy of the heavenly pantheon do not claim to be beyond the sun or the moon. There is no Venusian or Martian among them. They do not come with far-fetched tales like the occupants of a UFO. However, the ubiquitous abode can be seen as a parallel universe of dark matter sharing our same space-time. There are some similarities between the Egyptian concept of the netherworld and that of the Homian. The, uh, the initiary, or the Semedo, or Gros Bon Ange, consists of a long trail leading to the river Azile. In order to cross the water in a barge, a toll must be paid to the ferryman. This toll is of silver. Again, the road leads to another river, the Gudu, and the fee for crossing this is paid in tobacco. Here we can see the analogy with Charon, the boatman who ferried the spirits of the dead across the river Styx and Archeon in Hades in Greek mythology, which is derived from the black Egyptian cosmologies. After the crossing of those rivers, the Semedo arrives at a mountain and climbs to, to its top to pay another toll of loincloth. Beyond the, that mountain is another river, the Silu, which is a resting zone, a port of coal where the traveling soul must wait one to three years for some rituals to be performed by the family or the society in order to cross the river and enter into the abode of the dead ancestors. If the rituals are not performed, the Semedo or Yi is transformed into an obnoxious ghost or Baka or zombie. This zombie should not be confused with the chemical zombie, which is a living person maintained into a state of submission and slavery by a specific concoction of drugs or poisons. The parallel universe of the Exionic Semedo, or Yi, is divided into a series of pyramids. At the top of each pyramid reigns a Toyo, a founder of the clan, a Nephilim-like individual born of the union of a supernatural being and a woman who was being de uh, deified. Below him are other Vodouns of that family tree. The newcomers and the non-deified souls occupy the last steps of the pyramids. Thus, the hierarchy scales down from Associate Toyo to Vodou to Hosu, a monsters, a monsters newborn, gangsters and guardians of the Chthonian doors, the spirits of twins, Dosu, Dasa, and the new deified Loa. 
Another important aspect of the destiny of the individual is in the afterlife is the fact that the that his position is determined by his economic status, not by his good or bad deeds. There is no karma influence. The wealth of the person or his family will allow an elaborate funeral. The more stupendous, the better in order to occupy good standing in the netherworld. On the Egyptian side of eschatology, the, do the tomb of to Tutankhamun is very revealing. However, there is a precariousness associated with that modus operandi. The post-mortem reality of the soul is too dependent on the choice of the surviving members of the family and their willingness to perform the rituals. The shadow clone is seeing boundary constraints imposed on by its existence by quantum determinations of other people. At death, it is facing the duality of Saint and Baca. Only a ritual will resolve that indeterminacy. The initiation rituals are supposed to be guarantees of salvation or post-mortem happiness. If the family does not have the means to perform the rituals or wants to ignore them altogether, the temple's clergy, Hongoen and Hosu, will perform them on behalf of the deceased. But what happens when the homophore are destroyed and the adepts or devotees change religion or become Protestant? For example, the soul will be lost in limbo. In ordinary circumstances, the Dessalin ritual is performed. It is like an act of exorcism, separating the lower of Odun entity from the Semedo. In that ceremony, the wave function nature of the entities are illustrated as well as their fractal essence. We know that the invisible matter clone must leave the body after death, and it is done in a progressive manner. Before its complete departure, a fractal portion is collected and placed in a govi or urn under the forms of pieces or nails or hair. The Hongoan priest summons the, de the head loa to enter into a composite state once more with the deceased. And when this is done, the cadaver shakes and the Hongoan performs the exorcism by sacrificing a live chicken. He sprinkles the head of the deceased with the chicken blood and asks the loa to leave the body and enter into the deceased's sacred necklace. That necklace is also placed inside the Govi. In Haiti, that Govi is the same one that during the adept's first initiation had stored some fractal portion of his shadow matter. This Govi is usually kept in a secure place in the humidor or at home, away from the malevolent actions of Bokor and dangerous Vodouns. Thus, any actions or rituals performed on the Go Govi and its content will benefit the clone of the abode of the dead or whatever it is in quantum connection. It is also interesting to see that in the Govi, the quantum link is maintained between the shadow matter of the Loa and that of the Gross Bon Ange. The process of the Bokongo and Haiti have brought in um, interesting variants of the postmodern status of destination of the individual. The Bantu vision, like that of the Dahomean, presents a pluralist nature of human beings. The Semedo corresponds to Moyo of the Bakongo, that is the Haitian Gros Bon Ange. The Saledo is the Mfukutu or T Bon Ange. The, la the latter returns to the creator at death, being a parcel of Nzambi, the Bondai. The Moyo at death goes to the world of the ancestors, which is located in the subaquatic region named Kumasa. The underwater abode of the surviving souls con constitutes a replica of the world of the living with villages, houses, farms, roads, and diverse types of wealth. In Haitian mythology, adults, preferentially young children, are sometimes abducted and led underwater to work as servants in the realm of the Vodouns. They are released after varying lengths of time, years, or months, or days to rejoin their family above. The sojourn underwater makes their hair straight and their skin lighter. There are some analogies between the treatment of the Haitian abductees that reported by Americans in recent years in the account of alien beings. It would appear that those so-called aliens are not really from other far advanced extraterrestrial civilizations, but are merely, merely shadow matter entities from parallel universes. 
In the Bukongo eschatology, the fate of the deceased is dependent also on the actions of the living family members. Their choice determines the post-mortem reality of the deceased. The soul remains underwater until it is recess, uh, re recuperated by the living to be deified or canonized as Loa or Vodun. That is a period of time that varies from one to three years and one day. At the appropriate time, the Hongguun or the Hongsu and family members go to the waters of with the jars of Gobi to perform the ceremony. It is a very expensive ritual called Wete Mona Dilo literally removing dead spirits from the water. When the deceased is ready to come out of the water, he communicates his desire to a relative or offspring. He does that through dreams. If his request is not acted upon, he retaliates by attacking the person with diseases or failure in affairs. The shadow matter entities can even cause the person's death. This is a very interesting aspect of the soul nature. It is confined to an aquatic abode, but its wave function allows it to reach people beyond the restricted dwelling. It is here and everywhere at the same time, but still it has to deal with boundary constraints, and its reality can be affected by the choice made by the living. In Haiti, the ritual is performed under a tent erected in the vicinity of the humifor under a tree. The tent is a closed dwelling, like the tabernacle giving access only to the Honguan or Mambo. Inside of it is placed a large basin or tub filled with water. The Semedo or Moyo of the deceased manifest themselves one by one in the water. They introduce themselves to the Vodou, Verduno or priest. A conversation is held between the two and finally the priest announces that he is going to place the soul in a Govi or a sacred jar. At the end of the ceremony, the Vodusi or Ahonsi carried the Govi into the humifor and placed them on the altar. A few days later, the Bule Zing ceremony is performed. The Govi are exposed to a sacred fire with the purpose of increasing the power of the forces that are the Semedo. Forty-one days later, the entities in the Govi are treated like lower or Vodums and receive food offerings that they share with the adepts. From now on, they are tulatary Vodouns and give protection to the members of their family. In Nigeria, the Voduno and Vodunsi go directly into the river with the Govi and place them underwater. When the ceremony is completed, they leave them in the river and they are supposed to be teletransported into the sanctuary which is far away. The Vodusi do not carry them, rather they get into the temple themselves. Another variant of postmodern condition of the soul is reported by Dr. J.C. Uh, Dorsevanil in Vodou et Novos. The blameless soul goes to Kamut, uh, Kamume, the abode of the dead, where they share a blissful life in the presence of Mao, the creator in the company of benevolent Vodouns. They still take interest in the affairs of men and play the same role as the saints in Catholic Church and encourage the sacrifices in the Dehomian cult. The wicked soul, on the other hand, is sent back to Mau to the is sent back by Mau to the earth, in the body of an animal, a lowly station that reminds us of the Samsamaric will of life in Hindu Buddhism, in Hindu and in Buddhism. Thus, the soul has the opportunity to be reincarnated in successive lives until it reaches salvation or moksha or nirvana in the abode of Mau. Dorsenaville does not tell us the nature of the surviving soul. It is the Semedo or the Siedo, or it is a composite like that of the a reunion of the Ka, Ba, Zed, Shadow, or other Egyptians in the postmodern state. The author does not tell us either of the abode, is it in heaven or is it in the subterranean world. But at any rate, it is somewhere in space-time, or universal self, and not in, in not in eternity, the X dimension of Yahweh. And that concludes our reading for this edition of the Vodou Gnostic Universe. So we talked about the presence of dark matter souls and the and the body double, and how the body double leaves the body 
and how there are different initiatory rites that exist to help transport the soul into other dimensions. So, hopefully we have enjoyed this series of reading. And we will return again for another volume as we continue to unpack the Vodun cosmology. I am your reader, Pharaoh Brown. Wholeness.